something that I'm, I'm quite proud of is, is the fact that I'm not afraid to ask when I don't know something. And I think that's a strength. Um, I think also the uh, understanding and acceptance that I am a work in progress as a founder, as a CEO, I'm constantly kind of trying to work on myself. Welcome, Aya Badea, CEO of Little Bits. Thank you for having me. Explain and describe to me really what Little Bits is. So uh, Little Bits is a system of electronic building blocks. So they're like little bricks, almost like Lego bricks, but they are electronic. Um, so they have lights and sounds and sensors. They're very, very easy to use. They snap together with magnets so you can't make a mistake. And so all you're doing is within seconds you start to put together a circuit without any experience in engineering, without any programming, and suddenly you can make all sorts of inventions that are useful or useless, uh, that use technology without having to be an engineer yourself. One of the things that of course is a huge obsession at the moment in our culture is what are we all going to be doing when technology and, and artificial intelligence eliminates more and more and more jobs. Do you feel that we're educationally prepared for that moment? Absolutely not. I think we have, uh, we have a lot of work to do. By the age of eight, about 50% of girls lose interest in STEM, and they are interested before that. To what do you attribute that, actually? It's a combination of uh, social pressures and stereotypes that girls have to prioritize, uh, being beautiful or being outgoing or being uh, uh, sociable. It's also the way a lot of platforms have been designed oftentimes with men and with boys in mind. And well, so you, you've been very uh, firm about the fact you don't want your little bits to be pink for girls. Absolutely not. So that w it was a very, very early uh, design principle that we are gender neutral. Uh, we are gender neutral because we want to get more girls into science and technology. And so we showcase inventions that are not about cars and, uh, uh, and, and robots, but they're about windmills and bubble blowers and, uh, and sibling alarms and things that are gender neutral that could appeal uh, to both girls and boys. You founded Little Bits in 2011 and you've raised well over $60 million in venture capital. Did you find it easy to raise the money? It wasn't easy at all to raise the money in the early days. I think being a woman may have played a part. I just sort of used feedback from other entrepreneurs uh, to make my pitches better. So some things that I learned early on are that women tend to uh, speak in question marks and I learned uh, to speak in so, sort of more assertive sentences. I learned that when women entrepreneurs pitched, oftentimes they try to overcompensate with data when really the investors are looking for a vision. And what do you think was the most critical factor that made your success? I think tenacity is definitely a big part of it. I think any entrepreneur um, needs to have a lot of um, he needs to have thick skin and, and be tenacious. You're trying to break grounds on multiple fronts and so you can't uh, let things break you. We work very hard uh, to, uh, to maintain and, and, and continue to grow diversity in the company. We are in New York for that reason, because I want it to be in a universal uh, uh, sort of setting where we're able to have access to people from different geographies and countries and genders and, and backgrounds. Uh, the, the company is about 40% women, uh, which is something that's an active uh, thing that we work on. We have about 20 languages across 100 people in the company. We strive for diversity. We work on it every day. It's, 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 not, a, um, it's not a sort of to-do on the list. It's almost just the way we live. Uh, and diversity breeds diversity. So when you have it, you, it's easier to attract more uh, people. What you th would you say was the toughest challenge that you've had to overcome? Um, while you've been building little bits from scratch. We've had big manufacturing challenges early on where we couldn't get to manufacture uh, at scale and we've uh, had challenges when we went from 50 people to 100 people in the company. So um, I think that um, I've, I've adopted the metaphor of uh, a startup as like whack-a-mole. Uh, you just gradually get better at whacking the moles, you get faster at it, and you uh, just manage to be happy you know, every day doing it as opposed to letting it kind of scare you. You're kind of a rarity when it comes to CEOs in America, right? I mean, because you're not only are you a woman, you're also a Muslim, uh, and you're an artist and you're an inventor. Tell me how you got the idea to do this company and why. So um, I've always been a, a, a tinkerer kid. I used to take things apart, very interested in how technology and electronics work. 
So I grew up in Beirut with three sisters, so we were four girls at home, uh, and my parents were always very, very supportive of us being in the sciences. Uh, my mom's always been a career woman, she's been an inspiration for my sisters and me, and my dad always used to get us chemistry sets and electricity kits and really encourage us to kind of play uh, with what was traditionally known as boy toys. Um, and so I was very good at uh, math and science, and my parents and my teachers uh, said that I owed it to myself to be an engineer. So the only time that I realized that other girls had not been raised the way I uh, had been was when I went to university and I saw that we were eight girls in engineering among 80 boys. If you want to start a company, um, I would advise uh, you to do that only if you have an idea that you're obsessed with. Because in a startup is all consuming. It's every minute of your life, it's every day for many years. If you have a really strong belief in that mission, what you're trying to achieve, it will carry you through all the ups and downs. The second piece of advice I would say is just, um, this is maybe a little cliche, but just like ask people for help. I think that people are generally very, very, very willing to help somebody that has drive. Uh, when they see somebody has drive and forward momentum, uh, people want to be part of it. So really it's passion and humility. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Aya. Thank you.